The year was 2001, and Weezer had finally returned after their five-year hiatus, releasing their new album known to fans as The Green Album. This album was a pretty big hit, but this came with a caveat. You see, in order to make this album a success, the band's frontman Rivers Cuomo wrote some pretty generic and formulaic sounding music in an attempt to make a hit song. I'm not saying this album is bad per se, in fact, I think it's a very fun album. It's just that after a while you start to notice the album's formula, especially with the guitar solos which all have the same melodies as the verse, so it can get kind of repetitive. Not to mention that the second half of the album all kind of blends together and sounds the same. This is especially egregious with songs like Simple Pays and Glorious Days which sound practically the same. Taking a look at some b-sides and demos during this time, a lot of them actually sound really nice. It's a shame some of these weren't included in the album as, even though they might have still had that green album formula to them, they would have at least helped with adding a bit more variety instead of having a bunch of songs that sounded the same. So that's what I'm going to be doing, rearranging this album. This means moving songs around, adding songs, removing songs, changing existing songs, you get the idea. Before we start, please take this rearrangement with a grain of salt because I'm no music expert. I'm simply doing this for fun and your version of the album might be different from mine, so don't take everything I say as fact because anyone can have their own thoughts and opinions on certain songs as well as their own ways to improve the album. So the first thing to do is to look at the track as it is. It's fine for the most part, but there are two songs that are removed, those being Knockdown Drag Out and Glorious Days. Knockdown Drag Out might work on the album, but I feel like it's a bit too short, ironic considering its name, and its absence wouldn't really hurt the album all that much. Glorious Days, on the other hand, doesn't have anything going for it at all. It's basically just simple pages, but much more generic sounding, and it doesn't have a cool outro or build up to help it stand out like simple pages does. So it's getting the boot too. So that's two tracks gone, but this is starting to look more like an EP rather than an actual album. So I'm going to be adding four more songs and turning this into a 12 album track, with those four songs being Oh Lisa, Teenage Victory Song, My Brain's Working Overtime, and The Christmas Song. Most of these songs were either b-sides or demos from around the time this album was released, so a lot of them will fit pretty well into this rearrangement. You're probably confused as to why the Christmas song is here considering the Green Album released in May and not December, but that'll all be explained once I get to explaining that song in the rearrangement. I think Don't Let Go is the perfect opener to Green. It's a catchy and upbeat melody and it really sets the tone for this album. The only change I would really make is the guitar solo, which you may have heard me briefly complain about in my other Weezer video. I'd personally change the solo to match the one performed by Brian Bell from the AOL Live session. The solo is much more dynamic compared to the plain verse seen in the album. I also noticed that when I played that audio clip, it didn't really sound like a guitar, and that's because I recreated all the songs you're hearing by myself through Beatbox. The reason I did this is because I wanted to upload a full album onto YouTube, but putting the actual versions would probably get me killed by the YouTube team, so this is the best I can really do. And yeah, that's pretty much it for Don't Let Go. Your first thought when hearing this is probably, hey, this sounds just like Photograph. And you're right, it does. Because it is. So, for context, an earlier demo of Photograph was leaked way back in 2001, as well as a bunch of songs and b-sides from Green. This leak of Photograph used the title If You Want It, since the leaked version included extra versions and a chorus that would eventually be cut from the final version. I personally prefer the new chorus as it's different from the first chorus and really adds a lot to this already pretty solid song. Besides that, I would also change the guitar solo. In a live performance, drummer Patrick Wilson plays really awesome guitar solo, so I incorporated that into this new version of Photograph. I decided to put Olisa in the third spot since it kind of has the opener vibe to it, but I didn't really want to replace Don't Let Go as I think that's also a pretty good opener. It would also be pretty weird to have drum beats at the start of the song for two tracks in a row, so it being in the third spot works well enough in this case. Now Olisa was a b-side, which meant it was never played in a live concert or had any alternate recordings that I could use for the new guitar solo. This meant that I had to make my own solo, and while it does sound quite similar to the verse, it's at least not an exact copy. The 
not the only change I made to the song, however, because Olisa was also included in the 2001 Green Album leak, and it came with a very subtle post chorus change. You see, the post chorus in the B side version had the same drum beats as the intro, while in the leaked version, the drum beats were used in the verse, which actually sounds much nicer in my opinion. So I just did a little bit of tweaking, and now the post chorus sounds more fun and upbeat. I personally think Teenage Victory Song is one of the best tracks from the Green era. It's got a pretty catchy melody and it sounds really unique. The upbeat vibe fits pretty well with the previous three songs, so that's why I put it here. And as for the song itself, it doesn't really have any problems to it. Similar to Olisa, this song has no live performance that I could use for the guitar solo, and the guitar solo itself was so short that I didn't really feel it necessary to change. So yeah, this and another song later on are the only two songs on this rearrangement to not have any change made to it at all. Teenage Victory song is honestly really fun, and I definitely recommend listening to it if you haven't already. Nad mashing aside. In my other Green Album video, I stated how Crab was my favorite song, and it's still pretty solid. In the new list, it would probably rank around 2nd or 3rd place, but that's still pretty high up considering there are 12 songs on this rearrangement. The reason I put it here is because it's sort of a slower song while still keeping the upbeat vibe to it. It didn't really feel right putting Crab in the second half, as you'll soon see why, and this seems like the perfect place to put it. The only change I'd really make to it is the guitar solo as per usual. I took the solo from the slide performance in 2001, as it plays around with the melody in a pretty interesting way. Finally at the halfway point. This is where I'm going to be discussing the different halves on this album. So when creating this rearrangement, I tried to think of a good way to organize these songs. And that's when I realized I could just split the album in half. So that's what I did. I included more upbeat and fun songs on the first half, while more slower and somber songs were included in the second half. This is also why Crab was placed in the second half. Despite it being in a slower tempo, it still kind of has that upbeat feel that wouldn't really be appropriate in the latter half. This meant that Hashpipe was sort of like the finale of the first half. It's not as upbeat as songs like Don't Let Go or Teenage Victory Song, but it's not as somber as some songs on the latter half. When I was creating this list, I wanted to use a demo version of the track from 2000, but upon second listening, it didn't seem to fit the album all too much, so I just used the album version instead. Even though I complained about the album version in my other video, it's grown on me and actually sounds pretty cool, and rating it third to last place was definitely a bit harsh. Moving on to the changes, I was pretty happy with the album version, and the only changes I made to it were A, the guitar solo, and B, the outro. The guitar solo was taken from a 2002 live show, and it sounds really cool and fits in well with the rest of the song. The other change I made was the outro. All I really did was change the drum beats to match a 2000 demo since I prefer the ending to that one more than the actual album. And finally, we're at the second half of the album. Opening off the second half is My Brain Is Working Over Time, which I'm going to shorten to My Brain, since it's easier to say. This song is unique in that not only does it sound different compared to the other songs in this era, but it also has some actual meaning to it rather than just being a shallow song about a girl. So for context, Weezer's previous album, Pinkerton, was a complete bomb. It, it, it did not succeed at all. This was due to Rivers Cuomo writing more personal lyrics compared to their first album. This led Rivers down to a deep depression, which is where he tried to keep writing a perfect song, which is probably how he ended up with the Green Album. After a while, he just couldn't take it anymore, so he wrote My Brain, which included lyrics like...
This is a genuinely great song as it has a catchiness you would find on Green while also having a lot of personal lyrics that you would find on Pinkerton and even Blue to an extent. So yeah, I think this is a pretty solid opener for the quote unquote serious side of the album. It's definitely more upbeat than Pinkerton, but it still has an undertone of being a bit more serious than what meets the eye. And I definitely suggest giving it a listen if you haven't already. Now, there are two versions of the song, the 2000 demo version and the 2008 version. The version I used for this rearrangement was the 2000 demo since it more closely matched the style of green, but the 2008 version is still really good. As for the changes, it's so small that no one would care, that being the backing vocals in the second and third verse. The change being that I would include it in the first verse as well, as it's absent in the first verse. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Not really much else to say, just go listen to it if you haven't already, it's really good. Ah yes, the slow paced but still really catchy Smile. Smile is such a great song, it's got that catchiness of green but at a slower pace to give it a unique touch. I put it here because it's sort of in the same spot as on the actual green album, just one track ahead. It seemed to fit snugly here, so I saw no reason to put it anywhere else. Not much really needs to be improved except for the guitar solo as per usual. Gosh, I'm beginning to sound as repetitive as a green album. This one's also from a live performance from around 2001. This time around, the solo is more similar to the verse melody than usual, but it's still different and matches the slower pace of the song. Simple Page is a really good song. It's really catchy well, still fitting that more somber approach on its second half. I put it after Smile because I feel like they kind of go together. I mean, Simple Pages goes after Smile the actual album, and I didn't really know where else to put it, so after Smile it goes. The only change I'd make is, once again, the guitar solo. This one was made by me since a lot of the live shows were just kind of similar to the album version. The chains were definitely smaller compared to Don't Let Go and Crab, but it's still better compared to the album version. I feel like even though Old Girlfriend has that closing track vibe to it, there are two more songs that do a better job at wrapping things up in my opinion. This song definitely feels like the beginning of the end for this album, in that it's more emotional than the previous tracks seen on the album, which is something the last two songs will also follow as we'll soon see. The change I made was the guitar solo as per usual. Seriously, Green had so much potential with really cool guitar solos, I don't know why they didn't change it or anything. The guitar solo I'm using is the one from a 2002 live show and it really shows the emotion that the original solo was missing. At this point, you're probably dying to know why the Christmas song is here, as well as why I called it Since I Found You in the title. My explanation is that, if you think about it, the song isn't really explicitly about Christmas. Sure, it talks about winter and there's an elusive tree, implying a Christmas tree of course, but these things aren't explicitly Christmas related and we can simply just say it's an odd coincidence or something like that. As for the name, I thought calling it the Christmas song wasn't really appropriate for a song on an album released in May. So the new name I thought of was Since I Found You, which was taken from a lyric in the actual song. The reason for the song name is because I think it has a nice ring to it, and even though the line in the song itself appears at a random part, other songs like Simple Pages and Smile do the same thing, so it's not like it's gonna hurt anyone. And if you still don't think it's appropriate to add the song to the list, remember that their next album, Maladroid, 
which also released in May, had a song called December, so checkmate. I feel like this song, while not personal, definitely has that emotional feel to it, going back to the whole last few songs having emotions thing, so I decided to include it as a second to last song. It could honestly work as the final song, but I feel like there's one more song that works better as you'll soon see. The guitar solo is again the only thing I really changed. The song was only played live once, or at least recorded live once to my knowledge, and that recording uses the generic live guitar solo, which means that I'm left to make my own guitar solo. Unlike the other solos I made, which I just slightly alter the current solos, I actually put a little more effort, and I'm honestly kinda happy with how it turned out. So yeah, this is a pretty good song, and it would honestly be a good way to end the album, but I think that there's one more song that works a bit better as a finale. On in the Sun is such a fantastic song. I think it's a great closer as it has that laid back vibe to it while still having a lot of the somber vibe in the second half. The fade out at the end of the song is also really good, as if to say goodbye to the album in a way. Even with all the heartbreak themed like Oh Girlfriend or the Christmas song, On in the Sun sort of paints a more happy picture, as if everything will be alright in the end. In the actual album, Island of the Sun is followed by Crab. Now, look, I love Crab and all, but those two songs definitely do not go together, and it was definitely more fitting to put it at the end instead of before Crab. As far as changes go, I wouldn't really change anything else in the song, it's pretty much just perfect as it is. Even the guitar solo, which is just the verse melody, actually works in this song instead of making it sound more generic like the other songs. The song's guitar solo was also reworked in the live show, similar to most Green Album songs, but the reworked solo doesn't work as well as the original verse solo, which is why I decided to keep it. Overall, it's a great end to the album. I would say listen to the song if you haven't, but it's their most popular song, so uh, make of that what you will. is a very interesting album. It's got a pretty deep history for what's a relatively shallow album, and it's got a lot of potential when it comes to things like guitar solo or song choice. Obviously this rearrangement isn't perfect, um, obviously biased since I mainly just include songs I like rather than what the general public might favor, but that's kind of the beauty of this. Nobody has a correct rearrangement of this album. People can do whatever they want with it and they might have their own way of how it might be like. The best comparison I can make to this is those fan edits of Star Wars that people make, where some people have their own interpretations as to what the perfect version of this piece of media is, and I think that kind of rings true with rearranging the Green Album. The day after I upload this, I'm going to be uploading a fan-made album of sorts, which basically just includes all the recreations of the beatbox songs I made, and I'm also going to be including a bonus track for those curious. I've also created individual drawings for each song. The drawings were the same ones used in the title cards for this video, but just note they were originally meant for the actual fan-made video itself. I was thinking of what to call the fan-made album, and at first I thought of calling it the Green Album Deluxe, but that just seemed a bit misleading since deluxe albums are usually just filled with extra b-sides and live versions, which this is not. I then settled on calling it the Lime Album, since the album cover is more lime than it is green, and also just kind of a funny name, I guess. That's really all I have to say. Check out the fan album when it releases, maybe send me a list of how you would rearrange the green album. And remember to stay wheezy. What does that even mean? Oh yeah, also thank you for a thousand subscribers. I forgot to mention that, didn't I? I'm serious. <laughs>